who introduce our first speaker, Case Wimbledon, of whose the origin of whose name I learned this morning on the boat coming in. Uh, I won't tell you where it comes from. Uh, he's from the University of Groningen. Uh, the title of his talk is Plastic TV. Not then, not then. 
And uh, so we just need molecules, but that, because that's what you do with molecules. We are one big mixture of molecules, no problem, right? I mean, everything works. So, um, and uh, so, and, but of course not a molecular mixture. Huh? The, the, the concept was, uh, it was a concept, by the way, that was uh, um, uh, advised by Paul Smith, who was a former physicist in Santa Barbara. He, because this is known from polymers. If you mix two polymers, you get all these kind of interpenetrating networks, bicontinuous interpenetrating networks. And that's exactly what was the idea behind this, uh, this mixing idea. Um, so you want to have those domains. I won't go into it. Sean talked about it. Yeah, the domains, you want to have them a certain size because of the exciton diffusion and then so on and so on. And uh, we always hold the brain that this happens spontaneously. I will, I will talk about that a little later. Okay, so in a different picture, which is all wrong, but it's still informative, and this is what everybody would write. You absorb light in polymer. I, I use some stretch uh, chains here, which is for PPD, it's ridiculous, but it doesn't matter. You absorb it somewhere, you have some exciton diffusion until you met the immediate interface. There you have the electron which hops from, uh, through the following phase, and the ball hops through the through the phase. But uh, of course, uh, you have to go uh, right of a random walk here and there. Um, it's very impressive, and this, this is very different. The, the birth of, of, of plastic PV is, is really covered, it stems from polymer uh, research, LED kind of research. And the last thing uh, that was allowed when we started working with Philips in the, in the mid 90s is uh, Philips didn't want any photovoltaics because they were working on LEDs and they were very scared that this would happen to their LEDs, you know, because if you have a trace of fluorine in your MDMO PPP, boom, it's dead, right? And this was the, uh, the, the original thing by Sardasarchi and Adida. So, this is the very famous classical picture that I will show again at the end of this talk. But yes, this is the famous picture. It's here, this is still a, a color C60, as I uh, used to show. And uh, here's MD, MDH PPV. Uh, so this is the old tendon. And later on, it was indeed uh, shown that it is a 40 femtosecond per second or 45 femtosecond per second forward electron transfer. And that you have a very, very long life. This was discussed today, being very important. So the history of, uh, of this kind of solar cell that goes from a I would say in 95, there is an unknown, uh, 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 unknown efficiency. There was a pretty high efficiency was claimed, but it's interesting to read that original science paper again, because you will see that in the time that we uh, published the fill factor, it was done by integration of the curve. <laughs> that really helps to improve your efficiency. Um, <laughs> so in 2001, 2.5%. Uh, the, the, main, uh, the main thing there was using the processing. Finally, some good thoughts about processing and using the right solver. Then 70 PCBM was introduced in 2003. I will talk a lot about that later on. Then PCHT was introduced in the beginning. It already worked, but then when you know how to work with PCHT, it, it improves. And then uh, the first tandem in 2006, and then uh, well, more than uh, two tandems uh, with 60 and 70 PCBM, 6%, Plextronics, uh, 2008, 6%. And you see that this, this the research cell, so once in a while you want to show something that is impressive for the public or so. And I said I was very good at it at the very beginning. In Leeds, they already made this device in 2000, 2004. Siemens is everywhere with Christoph, brown explosives. So you see these nice uh, big cells. <laughs> And then uh, Tornaka, uh, I was told later that this is a uh, disensitized uh, solar cell, by the way. Uh, but this is not. <laughs> and um, so uh, by now it's real and the field is booming. Uh, well, you're not surprised. And then we have in the last year, was 2009 was a superb year. It's a little troublesome because it's July 1st now and we haven't had a new record. What is wrong with you guys? I'm only the chemist. What, what are we, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> In 2009, look at that, 6.4, 6.86, 7.6, 7.9. Really very, very nice and all done with 70 pieces of meal, by the way. And I will come back to that. Um, so the field is booming. I search, sometimes I, 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 uh, I search for, uh, for how popular, not the person is, but how, how popular certain materials are. And the PCBM surpassed P3HT, I saw. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, uh, so I mean, this is 2010. That's because we're only halfway the year, right? So it's going, it's going to go. This is going to go crazy. 
It's really ridiculous. So it's, uh, the field is exploding, uh, exponential. Um, this is about that, uh, that uh, what is it, uh, gigawatt capacity? Nameplate capacity, nameplate capacity. Well, this is, this is the capacity, so it's a two hectare uh, uh, plant from uh, Poloi. It looks to me like a nu nuclear plant if you look at the control center. But this is how you use it, as small as possible on the big machine. Right? <laughs> this is cute. By now, I think they made a lot of us, but I've never had anything there. Um, so, uh, and, and then, of course, as Tian already mentioned, you can go crazy when you start thinking about uh, new, new uh, possibilities. And this is uh, this semi transparent stuff, and uh, this is something that I really adore. And uh, this is also done by Konarka, by the way, which is kind of remarkable that you put money in, in, in this hobby uh, PV wire, right? A real a wire, an electrical wire that makes its own current. Isn't that the kind of a thing? So, uh, I mean, it's not very efficient, although they claim the 3.4, I think, but that depends on what you define as the active area. So, I want to show another very old slide. It may not be that famous, but it's 96. And this is on morphology, morphology, morphology. This is, we, with the start of the bulk of heterojunction uh, solar cell, you get rid of one problem, but of course you open a can of a whole lot of new challenges. And, uh, uh, and it's all about morphology. And it's very clear what we wanted originally is that we say, okay, it's, it's not difficult, you, you need a certain thickness of the layer for light absorption, but you don't want to have it too thick because of charge carrying transport. You want a certain width of your domains because of the excitron diffusion maximum something like maybe 5 or 10, depending on the material. If you have crystal material, by the way, uh, the excitron diffusion length in piece of limb, I think, is not known, but the crystal C6 is 15 nanometers. I mean, crystal material is way, way higher than in, in uh, this uh, uh, crystal material. So, and then, of course, there's another thing. You don't want to have it too small. Because if you don't have it, if you have it too small, let's say one molecule wide, you don't have a material property, you get recombination all over the place. I will show you some proof of that because we, in the beginning, we didn't believe that. Um, so, this defines, and this defines your morphology, and of course you want to have it very straightened. You want to have what was called, a uh, long time ago, the molecular electronic highway. Yeah, you want to have straight lines, because you don't want to have dead ends and, and, and all kind of that stuff. You want to have a short path out to the electron. So you, want to, you don't want to have this random stuff, you want to have well-organized uh, structures. And here you can ask, how many lanes do I want? Maybe I want a six-lane road or an eight-lane road. It's an interesting question. It's, just, it's more than 10 years old, the question, and it still hasn't been answered because it is very, very difficult to make those kind of structures. It's, it's very easy to come up with the ideas, but to really, uh, I can go on for a long time. Are there still some chemists, uh, some synth synthetic chemists in the, in the audience? Oh, less than yesterday, but did I scare you by the question? <laughs> Um, so the other question is, for example, do we need for, for safety? What do we need in between? And this is for recombination, right? How much, do, how much, how much safety do we need this stuff? Do we want any, or do we want and so on? You can, it's very, very trivial questions. So, what has been done for a long time is to work on that. And of course the easiest thing, and this is the present day situation, it's all about processing. You can use solvent or different solvent combinations, additives, your coating methods and your deposition methods, you have slow and fast and blah, 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 all these different things. And then you do the annealing. So this does a whole lot of stuff and it's not very expensive. It's just a matter of trial and error before you know what you have to do. Once you know, boom, there you go. And this is, this is the industrial way. In the other, let's say 10 years ago, uh, people started with the super molecular way. Just designed the highway and made everything very, very organized. Also covalent, don't accept this in that molecular diets and double cable, this is a polymer that has a pending uh, 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 phone on it, that was then the other road, and the dibloco polymer, which is the solution that every polymer chemist will tell you will solve all your problems. And, and the only thing is how to make it and how to organize it in your device that it is actually sitting as the way, in the way that you draw it. That's impossible. And like that, neither one of the super guys in, uh, in super molecular chemistry is totally convinced that we cannot do this at the, at the time at, at the time being. For time being. So, super molecular chemistry, very simple. We concluded a long time ago, the more beautiful the structure, the, more, the easier to publish, 
and the worse they work. <laughs> Crystallinity is of course very important. Solubility or the kinetics of the crystallization, glass transition temperature, I will show you a little, and compatibility, which is uh, another thing. Is, uh, you can have specific information. They don't have to be hydrogen bonds with all the super super molecules. They can be way more subtle, like intercalation and all those things that you don't see in an obvious way from the structure, but which is usually discovered that molecules do all these very smart things that you wouldn't expect to do. Similarity and maybe electronic soap. What is that? I will show you what I mentioned, what I mean by electronic soap. So a little bit on the crystallinity, you know, uh, is, uh, is, is a long time ago we did a PCBM, PCBE, PCB2, PCBDH, PCB, and so on. There's a different, different taste. And of course, PCBM was uh, something that had a side group with, uh, with MDH and MDMO PPV. And this group was pretty put on because it's the MDMO from the polymer. It's the same thing. So it's a kind of uh, compatibilizing uh, game. If you take up the phenyl group of, of uh, PCBM, it doesn't dissolve in anything. If you make the tail one shorter, it's already pretty insoluble. And this was a well-known impurity in all PCBM. More recently, uh, we also, for very different reasons, in collaboration with Klaus Mierholz from Time Daily Holographic Imaging Experiments, we, we made a whole series because he wanted to have the glass temperature down. So, uh, for sports side, my group, uh, the PCBM has a glass temperature of 250, roughly. This PCBM, which I will show you later, 150. And then, when you put on longer tails, or two tails, and the champion is two long tails, then you can kind of have a glass temperature of under, uh, under zero Celsius. And this can come handy because it, 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 it can influence your morphology also. Uh, compatibility is slightly different. Compatibility, you can do something as I showed before. You can take a side group, uh, a solubilizing group, which is the same solubilizing group as your polymer. And that's uh, with this, uh, this acephololoid and the ketolactam. Um, uh, and you, and uh, we also did that on PCBN by putting uh, other alkoxy groups here. Uh, you can also um, make it similar to the backbone of the polymer. And this was done, for example, for polythiophenes with PCBHT. We developed this you know, simple alternative with the thiophene group, and it gets, uh, it gets slightly different results. Not too and then more recently, we, uh, we had this uh, fluorine group that uh, mentioned, uh, was already mentioned by Sean, and I will show you a little bit. Why did we have three different ones? Because people make three different kinds of, uh, of tails in their polymers. So I said, okay, let's move on through that. Materials quality this was, uh, is something that I wanted to mention yesterday. Um, it's, it's, it is very, uh, it is probably forgotten by most of the physicists that when a chemist tells you that they have used a, a, a pure, a, a bottle of pure material, it is of course not pure at all. Uh, and according to, especially when you're a semiconductor physicist. Right? I mean, a chemist thinks that the, the purest chemicals go in the pharmacy, right, in your pills. But that's about 99% pure, right? It's just 1% impurities. No problem, you can eat that. <laughs> so, uh, as long as you know what the impurities are. <laughs> um, but of course, if you think it, in, in 60 or 70 pairs of PCBM, well, one of the reasons uh, is that we, we don't talk about it, but there's a whole lot of work that went into the quality of these photonics. Because they have been used for such a long time. Now they are monitored. The impurity, uh, oh, this should be 50 ppm, sorry. I don't know why I was, I don't know why that got lost. But it's, it should say 50. It's a, a one of the, there's one of the impurities that we really don't want to see. As soon as we see it, we say, okay, this is not good enough. I, I can't go too much into it, but this is the way that we have PCBM that works. Uh, it's a low molecular weight material, so it's relatively easy to make it pure and to have a constant quality. Uh, PCBM, by the way, don't forget, is an isomer mixture. It's pretty constant, but it is a mixture of isomers. Let's see, 60 PCBM is, uh, is one isomer only. Now, now polymers, because this was easy, now polymers. I mean, you have to realize that 10 to the 16 charges uh, per cubic centimeter or something is really, is, is very normal. And, and higher is normal, especially when you do not do a serious de-doping after making your polymer. In certain polymerization methods, it is standard. But in others, it's still a good idea to do it. The de-doping is, of course, getting out your charges. 
Uh, and the chemical integrity, people don't know. If people tell you, I have this polymer, they will show you a structure on paper. They say, this is the polymer. But that structure may be only, a, only maybe 20% of your mixture. Okay? And they will say, oh, it's a very nice molecular weight. Yeah, it's a molecular weight distribution. And, and the polydispersity, of course, is also, uh, well, you know, we have to, we have to wait. You know, I, say, I will show you a little bit. We are working on this. Uh, in my group, we are doing also some, uh, some polymerization work. And I can show you, if you make a polythiophene by extender still a coupling, and you look at the, at the mass spectrum, you look at this multi-tough spectrum. This is the multi-tough spectrum. Now, when you, you should realize that when you have a clean polymer, what you want to see is a monomer, dimer, trimer, and so on. Right? So it should be boom, 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 boom. This is this, this, uh, this forest of peaks that you see. I don't, well, you can see one, two, three, four. You see some regularity. Okay, if you do a clean polarization, it looks like this. Yeah, but this was a commercial problem. Okay? And this is how it, it, it's still not clean, but, and then of course, why, uh, why do you have all these things? Because you have them with one bromine, with uh, two bromines, or is it? With one stanate with hydrogens, uh, otherwise uh, terminated, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yeah? And this is normal, because that's normal in the polymerization reaction. It belongs to the chemistry. We better, we better come up with much better chemistry to make polymers. There's, a, there's a, a load of work if you don't know what to do in OPV. Please. Uh, here's another example. This was this uh, polymerization of this polymer by still and pictures. This, this uh, forest, and if you do it in a homo polarization uh, according to PhD students in my group, it looks like that. Because this is what you want to see. Okay. That was uh, about uh, the general story. Now I will uh, talk about uh, this uh, little voltage for free, and that uh, you sometimes see, which I call delta delta V or C. Uh, and, uh, and it depends also a bit on what uh, the derivative you use. Um, first, uh, there is a relationship between uh, the, uh, the, the energy, energy difference between the donor homo and the homo of the acceptor uh, and, and the VOC. It, of course, that, that energy difference does not define your VOC. That's obvious. If you, if you shine, uh, if you don't shine enough light, you will get a lower VOC anyway. So, I mean, it's more complicated. And it will never reach this also for obvious reasons. But it, it, let's say, it limits your views. And this was in, in, uh, in 2001, this was not obvious. In, uh, so it was proven by, uh, by, by taking four different acceptors, increasing strength, and mixing them with the same polymer, and looking at the VOC of the devices, and then plot the VOC of the devices against the first reduction potential of the acceptor. And you see some relationship, which is interesting, <coughs> if you wish. And it's a one-to-one -one relationship, which is a kind of interesting. Uh, very, very many people at that time didn't even believe that, right? Now it's it probably it's kind of obvious to everybody. It's still questionable though whether it should be so obvious, but that's another thing. Um, later on, uh, we made a whole lot of uh, derivatives that are less good acceptors because that's more interesting because then you get at least you hope to get better devices, right? Instead of worse devices. So, um, uh, but that was it. Very subtle way to <coughs> epoxy groups on PCBM. It really, in, in the difference in VOC, of, in, in the first reduction potential compared to PCBM, we put PCBM on zero. So uh, you see that it's a little harder to reduce. If you put three metoxies on, it's about 40 millivolts harder to reduce. <coughs> and uh, and uh, if, you, if you replace, of course, hydrogens by fluorines, then you make it more like an acceptor, and then you get a plus. So it's easier. Anyway. So it's very subtle, very subtle. Some people even doubt how uh, relevant these changes are. It was very difficult to make the solar cells and to see the, to see the, uh, the trend. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's very nice that we look at VOC trends because it's much easier to get some good VOC from your device than to get the optimal current from your device. That's about one or two years of work. And uh, VOC is maybe a, a, a few uh, experiments that you know how to do it. Um, to get the VOC up uh, for uh, P3HT was really necessary because P3HT is a, was an improvement after the after the PPVs for obvious reasons: stability, crystallinity, mobility. Very nice. 
There's one thing that was wrong. There's one thing that's really wrong with P3HT, and that is the, the, the position of the lumen. So only for P3HT, it was really necessary to come up with worse acceptors in order to increase that VOC. If you make the right polymer, you don't need to do that. But you know, P3HT, we need to do it. So one, uh, one trick to do that is to not work with PCBM, but to do the reaction twice to make this PCBM. To remove another double bond from the following, and you remove the double bond, it becomes less of a good acceptor. Yeah? And this step was, is about 100 millivolts, so we hope to get another 100 millivolts. And it's a hope that this still would work. Um, well, that was done, and I, will, I won't take too much time uh, for the whole story. Uh, just show you the, the final result that Martin, Martin Lane has got after one year of hard work is that you get the device with re region regular PCHT working as good as with PCBM and now with this PCBM. Yeah. That is not trivial. Uh, but you can see that finally he got it, the current is almost identical and you get the, the, the gain in uh, VOC. Interesting is that this gain in VOC is 150 millivolts while the uh, LUMO by electrochemistry is really only 100 millivolts higher than that of PCBM. So here we get 50 millivolts for free. That is what I call delta delta VOC. Yeah? And if it's plus, it's fine. Uh, if it's minus, you're in trouble. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, and you, know, you don't get that stuff for free usually in, in PV research, so it's interesting to look at. And, um, so this, this is kind of nice, nobody paid attention to it. Maybe because most people would say, well, I may be in the, uh, in the margin. Anyone in there? We don't know. Well, okay. So, um, after this PCBM was tried, of course, uh, we tried a lot more of this evidence. Uh, this evidence, by the way, they are a mess, eh? I mean, they are <coughs> an incredible mixture of isomers, but I don't have to talk. I have the time to talk about the isomer mixture, but it's, it's really interesting. We're trying right now to separate some more, uh, and uh, just as an academic hobby, to see what the difference is between the different isomers. Um, but uh, so there are more mixtures, like this 70 PCBM, this TH CBM with that thiophene group, and 70 TH PCBM, and even tris adducts. And uh, they were all tested, uh, and we looked at uh, also at, uh, at this delta delta VOC. Well, uh, this is 70 PCBM, and this edit also shows uh, 40 millivolts more than you would expect from the first reduction potential. This TH CVM is on the spot, I would say. This 70 also on the spot. Tris is even uh, a little bit on the negative side. Uh, but it was remarkable that we could at least get a decent VOC from that device because it's a really, I have to use nice words because this is tele telecast about it, but it's not a very good device. <laughs> okay, um, uh, so there's even a few more. Uh, this PCBM repeated here with a plus 50. Here, uh, this yields other adducts, uh, like in the Frechet type of uh, materials, uh, because Frechet group showed earlier that if you have yields other adducts, they give slightly extra high VOC. Uh, they are slightly worse acceptors than methanofolines. This was also used later on by, uh, by Plextronics in their uh, V2000, which has the this indie, and the indie is also yields other um, so, uh, so we, we knew that and we also looked at this, uh, uh, this uh, habit. Um, then the tris edits, well, they're not very interesting because they don't work. But you see that the deals all that doesn't really give you the, the, the bonus. Um, so in the literature, we look further, these are two, like a, this looks very much like PCBM, but there's a nitrogen atom there. It's a typical Fred Bundle trick uh, to, uh, to make an alternative. And, uh, I said he has the 5-6 and the 6-6, azafolaroid and fulloroazuridine, uh, oh, I think, uh, compound. And then another, the Frechet, the Zalder Edict. Here, here you see two other Moodle uh, derivatives with, this, with the solubilizing chain. Uh, and here we have the endohedral uh, uh, material uh, that uh, was... Uh, was uh, um, uh, popular a year ago, I think. Um, and we looked at the house of delta delta VOC, and it's roughly uh, all within experimental error. There are no surprises there. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, now, this brings me now to this uh, result that we got with, um, with the fluorines. 
we embarked on a little synthesis for fluorinated uh, fluorines, if you wish, because of this compatibility game that we like to play with polymers. So we decided we will make PCBMs, but not but now with the fluoronyl group, with different side chains, as I told you, for uh, the fact that there are on, in, in the world the, there are different polymers with different side chains. We, uh, we uh, looked uh, at the incorporation uh, uh, with uh, Konaka, we looked at this polymer, which is PF10 TBT. So 10 meaning that we have two decimal groups, so we have this reason that also this has two decimal groups. Uh, oh, this should be accepted so yeah, by now. Uh, so we synthesized those three, uh, Jan Carlos in our group synthesized those three uh, compounds, and uh, we looked at the, at the first reduction potential, as Sean mentioned already. <coughs> they are spot on with PCBM, no surprise, they should be. If you look at the solar cells, you look at the VOC, and you have, ver uh, you have VOCs, delta delta VOCs, 110, 120, and 110. So 125, or 124, okay, 120 millivolts extra. <coughs> now, this is, I think, above what you would say. Uh, what's in the area of the, of the, of the devices. So now, now it becomes very interesting. And uh, uh, we want to know what's going on. And for that reason, uh, 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 Sean uh, worked and said, OK, well, <laughs> there's one polymer that we would really like it to work with, and that is with PCBHT. Yeah, so Sean looked at PCBHT, and as he, as he showed, uh, you get the same result, but about half of what we saw with the, with the, uh, with the other polymer. Uh, so, but, uh, again, uh, it seems to work with, uh, with different polymers, but not uh, in, in the same, uh, in the same uh, way. Okay. Um, so, and, we, and, and, and we're still working on, on the explanation. Um, we, can, uh, we can discuss a little bit, because yesterday there was also a suggestion for, a, for, a, um, for an explanation. Uh, I want to point out that uh, I showed here some of these uh, Devices, for example, with this PCBM, it, it is a result of a, also the, uh, that you get also with very good solar cells. It is not the, the result of a, of a bad solar cell. It's not some triviality that something rocks or whatever. Right? With, with the PCBM, this PCBM cell is a, is a, is a record cell. Okay, now, um, uh, because I want to take a little break for uh, coffee, I will show you. Uh, yeah. The real, uh, the, the real thing. Yeah? So this is uh, what was shown. If you wanna, if you wanna pass it on, it's fine. And I'll take a sip of coffee, and then I go to the last part of the story. And that is um, uh, that is uh, work that was done in Groningen recently. It has been published a month ago, um, and uh, on the spectroscopical uh, analysis on the the. Uh, Genetics of the whole transfer in our cells. Something that nobody has done in the last 15 years. And the, the, the kinetics of the electron transfer was a very old slide. And it was one of the first things that was done already in the first paper before, before they made the solar cell. They were saying, okay, it's faster than the people said. That, that was clear. Yeah. But nobody cared about the whole thing. Okay. So let's see how you do that. So, uh, uh, we embarked on that, uh, uh, on that uh, uh, piece of research uh, with the same materials, on purpose. Yeah? So PCBM and DMOPP, although of course you don't want to make a solar cell with DMOPP, we just wanted to look at the same stuff for, for various reasons. Okay, so this is the standard picture that every physics professor will tell you when he starts talking about this kind of solar cell, you have a light absorption, and, you, and then you get the problem with the transfer. Of course, there's a whole lot of stuff is wrong in this picture, but that doesn't matter. But the point here is that very few people will show you this one as the next. And you should, from now on, from today on, please do that always. And I will convince you why you should do that, okay? So, the other way around is that the acceptor absorbs the light, and you have a vacancy here, and you do an electron transfer, which everybody calls whole transfer because it is, it is in the um, uh, uh, pagans band um, and then you have the same end result. Exactly the same end result. It doesn't matter. And I, it's cultural that we do this. Oh, it doesn't want 
linguistically. Uh, it's cultural that we all show this and not show this. And I want to, to do a paradigm shift here. Okay, I will show you how bad the situation is. This is a famous picture. I think this one comes from the Shabra uh, publication, right? And uh, but there's also a publication from the London Post of Paul Blom, and, and may, I'm sorry if I missed one or two, because there's many uh, publications in a, in a very short period of time about the, the design rules for a uh, solar cell. I think it's, it's a pretty strong uh, title for a design rule, so I, you know, yeah, I know what to do. Okay. Anyway, um, and it's based on the following uh, uh, assumption. The limiting efficiency can be predicted solely as a function of the band gap and the low level of the donor. And in the other paper, any contribution to the short circuit turn from photons absorbed by coloring is neglected. No problem. You know what that means? That means that this is the absorption spectrum of the donor, of a molecular material, mind you, and this is the absorption spectrum of the uh, acceptor. I hope you agree that this is not very realistic. PCBM may be a lousy uh, absorber, but it's not zero. So, um, 45 femtoseconds, forward electron transfer. Polymer fluorescence was quenched by a factor 1,000. That's what they knew in the beginning, so the forward electron transfer should be packed faster than picosecond. Later on, they said faster than 100 femtoseconds because they had other instruments with that uh, 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 time limit. <coughs> then 2001, ultrafast laser spectroscopy, you pump with a 6 femtosecond pulse, rather broadband, of course, and you probe with the same kind of reason. And, uh, and, and they found 45. So this was the electron transfer. Now, how can we know the whole transfer? Okay. We, why do we want to know the whole transfer? Because we know the whole transfer is, is, can be very important. I will first show you what that it is, and then, then we'll go. Okay, this is the absorption spectrum of 60 pcbm, and this is the absorption spectrum of 70 pcbm on the same scale. Indivisible. Of course, there's a whole lot there in the UV, but this is indivisible. So 70 pcbm is, is much more interesting for a solar cell than 60 pcbm. Uh, do we know that um, that was known in two, that was realized in 2001? And, and, and uh, but it took quite a while before we were able, or uh, the, this was not the we is in this case uh, uh, Rene Janssen. Uh, the Janssen's group finally realized that the, the holy chlorobenzene from Shang was not the, the panacea for all your uh, morphology problems. That if you use a different material, you might have to use a different solvent, right? <laughs> and that was so surprising. And so ODCB is where you want to work with if you use the uh, uh, 70 PCBM with MDMO BBB. And then finally we got that working and the, uh, the here you have the action spectrum set with 70 PCBM compared to 60 PCBM. So it, it really absorbs and helps to do the action. So that must be whole transfer. And that was the whole idea behind it. That must be whole transfer. It's through absorption. Okay. Uh, and now, last year, I showed you four, four world records. Here it's 5.1, 5.6, 6.6, .6, and 7.4. 7.9 is the same thing. They're all with 70 PCBM. That's not because these people just use the bottle of 70 PCBM because they're out of 60. That is because you really need it. And that is because, look at the, if you have a low band gap molecular material, you don't have this block absorption kind of thing. We have, also with low band gap polymers, you have limited absorption. You have limited density of states. So if you have a low band gap polymer, and here's your absorption, and here's your blue-green region, that's very normal for a low band gap material. Because it's, it's much harder to make this material. So you blend in 70 PCBM, and boom, you have all that absorption in your blue-green in this case. So it's a complementary situation in which here most of the action is by the 70 PCBM and here most of it is by your polymer. This is how you make a 7.5% cell. There's, it's more subtle, but you know, I have to do it this way. Um, uh, and here you see the difference with this polymer between 60 and 70 PCBM, also in the blue-green, in this case it's not quite in the blue-green with this, because you have a strong absorbing low-bender polymer, so you, uh, your, your, your help is needed with the blue-green. 
So, all these cases. So it's all must be whole transfer, right? Okay. Now, now finally let me tell you how we looked at this whole transfer uh, situation. Um, what they did is a series of MDMO, PPV, PCBM uh, layers with 1% PCBM, 15, 30, 15, 70, and so on. Yeah. And, you, and then if you look at the absorption spectrum, you look over only at the yellow red part, you see that the more PCBM you put in, the more absorption you find in this region. So this is the reason to try to selectively excite your PCBM, because we want to do whole transfer. So we want to excite the acceptor, and then look at when do we see a polar bond in the polar. That's, that's basically the idea. So they used a, uh, a 40 fem per second excitation pulse, a little bit on the long side, but, but that allows for a nice and narrow uh, spectrum of that excitation pulse. So we excite in the area where mostly, but <coughs> more than the polymer, uh, the PCBM is, uh, is absorbed. It's a kind of linear, uh, the more PCBM you put in, you have more of that linear increase in this, uh, in this uh, Okay, so now we're going to do pump probe. Uh, oh, by the way, it's drop cast from chlorobenzene. So it is the right solvent, but the wrong processing method, if you wish. Uh, that means, and we will see that a little later. It's not very <coughs> important, but you can see that it's drop casted instead of spin drop. Okay. Now, here comes the, the experiment. Ultra-fast laser spectroscopy, femtoseconds. Uh, you excite at, uh, with that little spectrum, and we measure at three microns the low energy feature of the, uh, the polar absorption. It's three microns, very important, very different. I have been told it's also not very easy to do that. And so now what we look is we, we pump, and we pump the PCBM, we hope, and we wait to, until we see the feature at 3 micron coming up, depending of the, on the amount of PCBM. So this is the cell, this is a layer with 1% PCBM, 5, 15, 30, 50, 70, and we look at the little delay of the signal that we find. And we see an increasing delay if we go to higher PCBM. So if we, if we plot that delay against uh, the PCBM mass content, here's the PCBM mass content, and here is that delay in femtoseconds as it is measured halfway here. And you find something like this, these blue dots. Oh yeah, if you use germanium, you have your zero. So what we see, we see an increased time before we see the hole um, uh, in the polymer, and when we are at 30% mass content in our uh, device here with this trace, we hit uh, roughly the 30 femtosecond delay, and it's, then it stays roughly around 30 femtosecond. Conclusion, very fast, this is the whole transfer rate. 30 femtosecond, plus or minus 10. And there's another slow uh, thing on top of that with a T2 of uh, 150 femtoseconds, we don't, we're not 100% sure, but uh, we think it's, uh, it is uh, related to uh, exoton diffusion in the larger domains of, uh, of PCBM. Yeah. Okay, in order to give a little bit more proof for this, uh, to, re to understand this, um, uh, we, th there, was a, there was a next experiment. Because what you have to understand is why is it first faster and then it becomes 30? Well, that is because the, the idea is that here, when you do not have enough PCBM, you excite the polymer directly. And so you make charges directly in the polymer. That is why you can find some very fast uh, ones when you have polymer only, and then you see the, the, the real hole transfer. How can we support that assumption? By doing the next experiment, and this is anisotropy. So anisotropy in the transient spectroscopy is the same thing. So it becomes quite uh, uh, high uh, tech, I think. I wouldn't know how to do it, but I see somebody nodding in. Yeah. Okay. So um, the idea is very simple. If you directly excite the polymer, you would expect a high anisotropy in the polaron uh, net. The highest you can get is 0.4, and so this is what you would expect. If you first excite PCBM, and then do a whole transfer, and then you look at the feature in the polymer, and you wouldn't expect any isotropy, an isotropy anymore because you know, it doesn't know what the fluorine did. So if you excite pure fluorine first, you would expect zero in isotropy. If you excite, uh, so did I say polymer? I meant PCBM. If you, if you excite uh, the polymer, you need to be high. So the, 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 the red dotted line is, is what you would expect, 
and this is what they measure. Okay, so everything is perfect, everything makes sense, but here it deviates. It's not, it's not crazy, it's very understandable. Why doesn't it go to zero? Because if you uh, go above 30% mass content of PCBM uh, with drop casting, that is where your PCBM uh, clusters start forming. So if you have formation of your PCBM clusters, you will always have some remaining uh, uh, anisotropy from direct, and it doesn't go to zero. Okay, so I think uh, this is pretty good. I won't take uh, more time. There's more, uh, more uh, in influenced by this uh, cluster, by the domain formation. If you look at the peak value of the, uh, of the transients, uh, they go up, but then above 30% they go down, and that's again because of this crystallization. And you see this is the AFM feature, so you see crystallization setting in here, that is totally <coughs> Um, okay, so was that uh, was that was that was that was that the ten minutes? Okay. Um, so this is what I would like uh, you to uh, to uh, replace your classical slide with. Yeah, the classical slide only shows you this. By the way, it shows C60. Uh, the, uh, so this is MDMO DVD with PCBM, and it is 40 femtosecond forward. And it is for 30, for 30 femtoseconds forward hole transfer the other way around. And this is happening at the same time under white light with your standard mixture. It's happening. That is the real situation. Okay? To wrap it up, uh, and I'll have a little bit of a bonus. Voltage. So usually, uh, this relationship between uh, reduction potential and VOC holds, but sometimes you get something for free. Uh, sometimes uh, we, got, uh, we got up to 120 millivolts for free, we in one case, with many options for exploration, we, I'd love to discuss about it, but you know, I, don't forget, I'm not a physicist, so there are certain explanations that, that I'm not very comfortable with. Okay, uh, current. So finally measure the whole transfer rate in that length, and it's 30 times per second. This is interesting. It's about the same as the electron charge. And so, therefore, uh, the efficiency of both should be roughly around one because these are both ultra fast uh, processes in this plane. I'm not telling that, I'm not claiming that this is universal. Eh? This is this plane where we measure this. But if it's the same, um, uh, sorry, I, 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 I was too fast. If it's the same, it can also be that it is not, it's the same. It's the same process. If it's the same speed, it could be uh, uh, an indication that we are looking at the same process. If you have a ground state interaction on the interface, pole transfer and electron transfer are identical. So, there could be more into that. We don't know. And of course, this would not be universal. Very careful. Best performing blends demand two optimized domain sizes. Now you have to take care that your following domains are not too big because otherwise your whole transfer efficiency, because of the exciton diffusion in the increasing gem domains, is also important. So you have to have the two domains uh, the right size. In high efficiency OBB, the two mechanisms operate simultaneously under 1.5. It's very important to realize that this is how the real cell works. Complementary absorbers, major consequences. Sean and I are thinking about this, and we ho I hope we can come up with something soon. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, general. So, my claim is donor acceptor photovoltaics, OPV, is symmetric. You can chew on that later. Uh, I think another thing is. Um, what, what you see very many times is that people compare OPV with something like technium telluride. And I can tell you, in my opinion, that is extremely stupid. Because there is no such a material as OPV, while there is such a material as technium telluride. <laughs> OPV is an infinite number of possibilities of molecules, of materials. And that's why I put there, how about edible PV? You know, uh, what I mean, that's the extreme beyond bios, uh, uh, enzymatically produced semiconductors, biodegradable semiconductors, green chemistry in, in, uh, or 
organic electronics do. It's about time that we start, right? This, it's going to be it's going to be completely different. In fact, there's loads of work: water soluble, water processing, and so on. Uh, bio bio compatible. So edible PC would be the limit, right? Okay. And another thing is, uh, this spring we were at a conference, and there was a, there were two analysts, market analysts, and one of uh, the analysts said four times during her her talk, "I don't hope, I analyze." <laughs> and I, that really made me go. I said, I stood up and said, I hope I am a, I am a scientist. Yeah. Come on, please, right? <laughs> okay. OPV is a marvelous research topic. You can see it. More and more people are going in it, but it is really marvelous because you, there's so much to do. From materials, synthesis, design, physics. Uh, spectroscopy, uh, all kinds of physics, you know, it's all that. And, and, and educate society on PV. This is really what we have to do. And we know we have to talk about, have to be able to talk about our work anyway. Uh, especially when you live in a country like the Netherlands with a very funny politician who says that science is no use. Imagine that this guy's being this kind of guy, or the guy that you had in the USA for eight years. When these people are in charge, you really better be able to tell what, how useful it is what you're doing. And it is, right? And it doesn't matter how fundamental you work on the product, on, on the subject, it is. So, uh, let me give you an example how I try. Um, there was this, this plan of growing an energy, this is my city, 180,000 people. Uh, 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 energy neutral to, to, uh, in 2025, 15 years from now, very, very soon. Uh, you know, the ones that are young here will think that's a long time. I know, I'm old enough to know that 15 years is nothing. Okay? So we better hurry. Yeah? Uh, so now think about energy neutral. Think about electricity. Uh, what does it mean? Why, what do you need? What do you need? And this is an interesting thing. So let me ask you, think. I will give you the answer. First, make a guess in your head. Don't tell anything. Just make a guess. What percentage of the area of your city do you think you would need to deliver 50% of all your electricity by photovoltaics? Is that a small percentage of your city? Is that as big as your city? Or do you need a little bit of the desert? Think about it. And do you have a real strong opinion right now, or are you in doubt? Okay. okay, let me tell you. It's, and by the way, that plan is not super spectacular anymore. The European Union adjustment made in 2008, we want 12% electricity with PV in, uh, by 2020. I don't think it's going to happen with the crisis because this was just before the crisis. Okay, Groningen, as an example. Groningen city, just a European, standard European city. Some industry, just an average city. One terawatt hour a year of electricity. Imagine we, I propose, is that, okay, we do wind and, uh, and solar 50-50. Just, uh, just uh, whatever. <laughs> and not so old. And we have a lot of wind in Holland. So we have a little uh, park in the, in the ocean, in the, in the North Sea, and it's called Princess Amalia Wind Park, and it's almost big enough to do 50% of all our electricity. 50 turbines of 3 megawatt is good enough. So very doable, right? Um, and then here it is. Three and a half square kilometer of solar panels of your average 15%. Okay. Cost is, uh, let's not talk about cost. It's very, I think it's very low. But here it is, this is the important thing. It's more important than I realized when I did it in the beginning. This is the area of, of my city. And this is three and a half square kilometers. Yeah? And I think it is for at least for a European city, maybe it may be in the US and uh, Australia it's slightly different. I think in my case it's about a fair five percent, and maybe in the US it would be about ten percent then, something like that. Or maybe I don't know. But that is in the order of what you need to supply your city with fifty percent of all electricity by PV. I think this is a good thing to know. And to, because no politician knows this. They have no idea whatsoever what you need. They all think, oh, this is a technology in 30 years and so forth. Okay? <laughs> and this is, uh, this is how, we, uh, how I worked with the, with the municipality on where to put it. On, this is the city, by the way. But you always have these certain areas around your city where there are dumb places and all these funny things that nobody does anything with. You can put your PV on top, of course. No problem. Right? So it's not good. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any questions? It's one more thing. Um, we, we showed a couple of years ago. We had MEHPPV and PCBM. We showed that fifty percent of the current and um, normal cell, on the four cell, came from the light absorbed by the PCBM. <laughs> That's uh, it's quite a large fraction. 
even with 60 PCBM, and this experiment is also done with 60 PCBM. Yeah, with 60 PCBM, you, there is an action. There is something, and, and it is indeed, it is now, no more people see it, but it is uh, undervalued, how do you say that? Because everyone says, the referees kept saying that everyone knows the polymer was alive. Exactly. I mean, it's, I mean, that's why it's a, it's a plastic solar cell. No matter whether there's 80% uh, BCBM in there, it's a plastic solar cell. And it, but it's just a history. This, this field comes from the polymer uh, people. So, you know, that's what it is. Um, but, um, yeah, if you look at action spectra, also, in the, uh, if, if you look careful at action spectra with PCBM, also with 60 PCBM, you sometimes see that little bump at 700. There's a very little bump, it's the same absorption bump in, in PCBM. You see it in the action spectra. So it's, it's very clear. So you, you have these low energy tails, especially in the C781, that go about past the two digit band gap of the column of the donor. Yeah. But those don't have an effect, a negative effect on open circuit voltage. I mean, do you have, like, he published a paper a while ago saying it might get energy transfer from the donor to the acceptor. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like those those low energy states in the acceptor, you know, I would think everything would go to those unless they're saturated somehow, and that might hurt your open circuit voltage or something. But you don't see any effect of that. But as long as you have, well, for the viewer, it should be like this. <laughs> because he is always the donor, he is the acceptor, right? If I put it like this, you get confused because we I mean, all have this. Uh, so as long as you have this situation and not this situation, you won't get energy transfer. Okay. Right? You shouldn't get this. If this comes close, or if, or if this comes close, Richard French showed that uh, quite a while ago. He had all these different uh, relationships, and he, he was playing with that. So you can, at a certain moment, moment it becomes uh, energy transfer, and you can get a different LED uh, situation. But as long as you have it more or less like this, then I don't see how you will get energy transfer. Well, I thought you had energy states that were out at like 650. You showed that spectrum where you had, a, you, know, you went to where the NMDO did not absorb, but the yeah. real absorption, yeah. the tail states, I guess, in C71. Yeah, but this is still, uh, uh, it's not, it, it is, it is uh, uh, the, the standard uh, almost 2 EV uh, absorption. It's, it's the band gap of the PCB. It is, it is, it's not the whole, it's not the whole. Yeah, that's all right. Any more questions? You showed two synthetic groups for a given polymer. Stilly coupling and, and Bauer synthesis. Yeah. Brower. Is it Brower? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What's Brower in? Yes. Ah, yeah. We will we will show that soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll show it soon. Okay. No, but and I, I, it's not that it's not that uh, that crazy. It's, uh, it's doable. One thing it said it was homopolarization. It's not two blocks. It's one block and one block. Uh, but it's it's really promising, right? If you look at that. You know, ooh, one last question here. Uh, I wonder what your opinion is. Removing impurities, is it always a good thing to do? I mean, I think there's some myths in. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Removing impurities, is it always a good thing to do? I mean, there have been some early myths and legends that some of the impurities are might be actually good. We don't know what they are. The only good impurities. Good impurities. Well, good impurities may exist. But um, uh, I always look at the, uh, at the whole thing like the landscape, and I imagine I'm a, I'm a charge, and you know, I have to go. So as long as you have bumps in the landscape, it uh, doesn't matter that much, right? But any any impurity that gives you a trap, why would I cannot imagine how that would help? Now, shallow traps, we have shallow traps all over, especially in the base PCBM, for example, you have loads of shallow traps, but. Apparently, under a good sun, you know, you don't. Um, but I don't see how how, uh, how 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 traps would be good or impurities. Would. Impurities can be tolerated. For example, if, if if you have an impurity that organizes your morphology and maintains it, <laughs> so a functional impurity, if you wish, of course. But that's a different story. Things called cool cool Sorry? Men is called an additive. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. Men is called an additive, yeah. Because you do it on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Okay, I think we'll draw the uh, questions to a close there. Let's thank the speaker once more.